Hey everyone, it's Kaylee here with Microsurvey, and today I'm going to share with you a really cool feature in Microsurvey CAD that I just learned about, and that is the Architectural Tools uh, tool set. Um, so recently I did a little project that entailed um, creating two-dimensional floor plans, and um, I did this all manual. Uh, and then afterwards, I found out that uh, I actually made my life a lot more difficult than it needed to be because there are some tools in Microsurvey CAD that would have made that job not only easier, but a lot more fun too. So uh, stay tuned and I'm going to uh, share with you now a little demonstration as I measure up uh, some of the areas in my house and show you what that looks like in MS CAD. Going to want to go to the Draw 3D tab on the ribbon and in here you can see we have walls doors windows railings etc um, so I'm going to start with walls so it gives you um, a few different options here okay so to keep this short and sweet I'm not going to be you know drafting a fully registered replica of like a leasing plan or a condo plan I just want to do a quick demo of some of the tools to you uh, then I'm going to fast forward uh, to what it looks like after I enter in all of the measurements that I took here at my house and you can kind of see uh, what like a facsimile of a finished product would look like. So I'm going to just make everything uh, interior wall just to keep it simple. Okay, so once you click on the wall, you can see there's a few different personalization options here. Uh, they have them set to the defaults, which I think are pretty standard. We've got uh, 0.1 of a width. Of the, that would be the wall thickness, and that's about four inches, which I think is pretty standard for an interior wall. Uh, we've got the height is 2.4 meters. Um, I think when I was measuring mine, it was like 2.44, so I'm just going to leave it at 2.4. And then we have justification and style interior. So. Uh, the main one that you need to be concerned with when you're drafting is the justification. So that is going to be, if you're looking down, where is that measurement being, where is that measurement being taken from? Is it going to be on the baseline, which is, would be the middle? Would it be the right hand side or the left hand side? So depending on if you were measuring clockwise, counterclockwise or clockwise, would that would be what your justification would be dependent on. So I'm going to set mine to left because I want to go counterclockwise. This doesn't have to be like geo-referenced at all, so it doesn't really matter what our start point is. I'm just going to click a spot. Uh, another important thing to remember is turn on your ortho mode. So what ortho does is it makes sure that everything you draw is at 90 degree angles to each other. Okay, so I'm going to hit eight meters for the length of the wall and hit enter and then i'm going to do seven and then eight and then i'm going to close it okay so that's basically it for how you do walls so um, you can also add in doors and windows, but how about I draft in the rest of the walls and then once we have all the walls, I will tune back in on here and then we'll put in the doors and then we'll put in after that the windows so we can see kind of each step of the process. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished drafting up all of the walls on the first floor. So my house is actually a split level. So when you walk in the front door, there's steps, you're on one level and there's steps that go up and there's steps that go down. So um, just to keep it simple, I'm gonna pretend that my house is just all one level and we'll just do that for the purposes of the demonstration. So I have my walls all in. Um, and now I'm going to add my windows. So, if you hit the window, you can see all of the different options for the different windows. So I have a big picture window in the front, so let's put that in first. So this is the front wall, and it's going to say select a parent wall or press enter, and it asks for the width, the height, the header height, and the style. So the width of this window, so I'm gonna hit W, is uh, 2.341 enter 
the height of the window was, so I'm gonna hit H, enter 1.524. And then the header height, uh, the default is two. I got 2.08, I'm just going to leave it at two. So now I'm going to select my parent wall, which is this interior wall in our living room. And then I can kind of, you can see it gives you dynamic options on either side to position it. So you want to make sure you have your snaps off when you're positioning the window. Um, so I know that that window was 1.2 meters from that wall. So I could either type it in or just click it and then enter. And then if you zoom in, you can see that it's all prefabricated. So you have where the pane is uh, and the glasses and all of the configuration of the windows. And again, that stuff is important if you're doing uh, registered leasing plans. Um, for me, it just looks good. <laughs> okay, so I've got a couple more windows to put in in the kitchen. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the big window in the front, which you guys saw me do, and then I put in the two windows that are in the kitchen and dining room area. Um, so now we need to put in the doors. So uh, the first thing that I'll do is put in the front door. So if you go to doors, you can see there's, again, a plethora of options here. We're just going to do simple single door. Now it's asking for the width. So uh, the standard width of the door opening is 0.9, but I know that this one is 0.8, so I'm gonna change that. And then the height, I'm going to leave all that. Everything is good. Now select the parent wall. I'm going to choose this wall here. And I know that my offset to that corner is that. And then I hit enter or escape. Um, and then another cool thing about the door tool is if you click on it, so my front door swings in, so this one's swinging out. So all I have to do is click that arrow and it will flip it. Uh, so you don't have to select it, mirror it or anything like that. It's just one quick click of the grip. So there's the front door. Uh, now I have an opening here that goes from the, uh, living room area into the kitchen uh, so that's just an opening there's no uh there's no actual door but there is an option for opening so i'm going to choose that the width of that opening is 0.955 enter and i'm going to choose my parent wall and move that over the appropriate offset, which is 0.294. Okay, there we go. So there's the opening into the kitchen. And then this little square here is the closet. So I'm also going to put him on there. Uh, so that's how you use the doors. So the really cool part is not only do I have this beautiful two-dimensional floor plan here that took me just five minutes to create, um, but I also have a 3D rendering of the space as well. So if you go into view and then under visual styles, we're in 2D wireframe. Let's use uh, conceptual. And now when I toggle my view and switch it up, look at this. It's a perfect rendering of the space. So that's a really cool visual that really didn't take any extra time to complete. So I was just going along making my two dimensional floor plan. And then all I have to do is switch the view and this was automatically creating itself in the background. So. Really cool feature. Uh, you can see here I've got this half wall in my uh, living room. 
So how I represented that was I just changed the height of the wall. So instead of the 2.4, it was like 1.5 or something. And that's a little half wall here as you walk in the door. Okay, so I was having so much fun with this. I decided to grab my Disto and measure up my downstairs as well. Um, so I have them here side by side. And I was just playing around with uh, throwing some dimensions and some annotation on these to kind of see how those were represented um, in the different views. So you can see here on my upstairs, when I added the uh, dimensions, it snapped to the floor. And when I added the um, dimensions to the downstairs, it ended up snapping to the roof. So I'm sure that could be adjusted based on uh, whatever you want it. Okay, so I believe that's it for my demonstration of the architectural tools in MSCAD. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed creating it. Um, you know, if this piqued your interest in any way, I highly encourage you to, if you have MSCAD, go play with it. It's super fun. And then if you uh, don't have MSCAD, well, I encourage you to download a demo and go play with these tools because um, you can see it, you know, I created this beautiful floor plan and 3D rendering and, you know, with the exception of actually manually taking the measurements with my Disto, the whole thing to put together probably only took me about 15 to 20 minutes. So very impressive and high quality deliverable in not very much time. So uh, that's it for now and take care and um, happy architectural drafting.